Guys turn 20 and pick one of these to base their personality around. I've seen so many of these fucking memes. It's uh, it's a plague of the on the internet. There's so many of them. Most of them are, are, are kind of funny. A lot of them are just straight up retarded. But I thought I'd make my own version of this meme uh, because I honestly believe in archetypes, especially male archetypes. I think that most men can fit into a certain set pattern of personality and habits. A good book about archetypes is King, Warrior, Magician, Lover by Robert Moore. Uh, it basically breaks every man down into one of four, or really eight, different archetypes. It's a good read, it's interesting, and shows how there is a lot of repetition, you know, throughout history and how people will think. And why archetypes exist, it seems to be come from a biological place where in hunter-gatherer times it's important to have different personality types that complement each other and have their own skill sets even if that means you're just taking out a fucking woolly mammoth anyway these are my six modern day archetypes based on Australian pop culture number one Mick Taylor Wolf Creek now I'm not being 100% literal here, this is kind of a gag. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that this guy is to turn 20 and just start fucking slashing women and, and killing people in the middle of the bush. But uh, when Wolf Creek came out, it was criticized for its realistic gore, but praised for the scarily realistic character of Mick Taylor, portrayed brilliantly by John Jarrett. I personally think Wolf Creek 2 did an even better job of exploring what is essentially a metaphor for bigotry in Australia and a lot of cultural norms that people want to pretend don't exist and bury in the past. The Ivan Milat killings didn't happen that long ago, which Channel 7 seemed to keep fucking reminding us every two months with another quote-unquote tasteful documentary retelling. Why the fuck do so many people watch this shit, mainly women? So this archetype is basically the current, like, incel slash pole slash R9K Venn diagram of men who are frustrated and take out all their frustrations on racial minorities, ethnic minorities, and uh, women. And while some of their frustrations may be well-placed, of course, sexual frustration has a lot to do with it, but also feeling like you don't even recognize your own country because a lot of the people there have a completely different culture to you, speak a completely different language, and smell really, really bad. It can drive a person insane and make them go on drunken Twitter rants late at night. This is the Mick Taylor archetype, the goes on pole and shit post there, but not in real life, ha 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 ha. Anyway, it's a bit of a dark one to start on, but I do think it's, in these modern internet times, it's becoming more and more apparent how young men are letting their anger kind of build up in this kind of way, and uh, yeah, it should be recognized, so that's the Mick Taylor archetype. Welcome to Australia, cocksucker! Number two, Marcus Stoinis, The Melbourne Stars. Yeah, Marcus Stoinis, the greatest BBL player ever of all time. I think uh, T20 cricket is basically an abomination on the sport. But Marcus Stoinis himself is quite fascinating and inspirational. Everything he does is just to get the satisfaction of scoring centuries for the Australian Test cricket team. He is a very frequent champion of the T20 international side, continually facing adversity and trying to prove himself. Everything he does is for scoring runs. Everything he does is to reach pure athletic perfection. So this archetype is basically the guy who always hits the gym, the slash fit manlets of the world. They go to the gym minimum five times a week. Every Friday night movie night, they're watching Pumping Iron. This male archetype is probably a good friend to have. They'll probably try and push you to your physical limits. And you might learn something new about yourself or do something you never thought you would do. 
Endorphins are the purest form of drug. So yeah, I mean, be like Marcus Stoinis. Why wouldn't you want to try and be like Marcus Stoinis? Number three, Steve Kerrigan, The Castle. Remember Steve Kerrigan from The Castle? He only showed up in the movie for like a minute, I think. But he's the guy who was always reading the trading post and led to the legendary Daryl Kerrigan quote. Tell him he's dreaming. You know, that's the one that everyone fucking says over and over again. But yeah, he's the guy who reads the trading post and will do anything just to get a good deal, even if he's buying shit that doesn't really matter. So this would probably represent maybe the more consumerist men in current society, but also the guys who are just really stingy, the slash biz of the world, always looking to make money. Their god is the coin. Out of all the archetypes shown today, this guy would be the most likely to be a millionaire. Also a good friend to have if you need some stock tips or want to know when the next Bitcoin bull rush is going to be. Just, you know, don't ask him for five dollars and don't lend him money, you're never getting it back. Number four, Russell Coit, All Aussie Adventures. So this is also, you know, a bit of a funny one. This is a, a, a funny character that everyone loves to laugh at, but also some people imitate him, you know. I think there's something interesting about this parody television show starring, you know, a clown who, who engages in slapstick humor, but also uh, people people like that. People kind of kind of even unironically mimic him because there's something missing on Australian TVs ever since Steve Irwin died and that hasn't been replaced so we have to make do with all Aussie adventure reruns on channel 10. This archetype is basically the outdoorsy guy always exploring very similar to the Marcus Stoinis archetype but except when you're doing a hike up a mountain he'll stop for 10 minutes just to stare at some flower. If this was an American archetype list, this would be the equivalent of Ted Kaczynski. The disheartened with modern realities. I imagined a Russell Coit archetype character would really hate the Steve Kerrigan archetype character. They would be polar opposites. The Steve loving capital and the Russell loving nature and the natural harmony of the global ecosystem. I think everyone can take a bit of Russell and uh, chuck it into their building, you know, be a bit more like him, challenge yourself to go camping more, challenge yourself to, you know, buy that swag from BCF that you've been putting off for months, dig a hole, you fucking cunt. Archetype number five, John Bunting, Snowtown. Alright, this is, this is half serious, half not, but, uh, I mean, John Bunting was a real person, but I just really like the movie Snowtown from 2011. This is a PSA that anyone who says Australian cinema is shit and hasn't seen Snowtown, please go watch it. It's a really good movie. But John Bunting, this is like the other side to uh, the, the Mick Taylor archetype. This is another frustrated male. Uh, but instead of taking out his frustrations on immigrants or women, uh, you know, he takes out his frustrations on libtards or gays or pedophiles. Which is actually what John Bunting did, but in a more literal sense. I recommend reading that in your own time. But as for this archetype, this is the kind of guy who will unironically read QAnon and President Trump general threads on poll. This is the kind of guy who doesn't actually pay attention to Australian politics, but will still vote for the Liberal Party because he wants to own the libtard cucks and worships Donald Trump. <clears throat> this is the kind of guy who should who, <laughs> who trolls university campuses and also university Facebook groups. This is the kind of guy who puts <laughs> who puts in two years of effort to a degree gets a bunch of fucking uni debt, and then gets expelled for saying the n-word. <laughs> but on the other side, if this is somebody who is so blinded by political ideology, they could also be maybe someone joining Antifa and getting involved in political violence. 
basically don't be John Bunting. I mean, you don't want to be Mick Taylor either, but I, I think at least Mick Taylor kind of makes sense. As I said, like, if you're getting frustrated with people who don't agree with you on a fundamental level, like down to what they were told at birth, like, the, the John Bunting archetype of just being obsessed with politics, that's, that's fucking gay, like, the left-right paradigm doesn't really exist, it's becoming more and more abstract as time goes on. Politics is just the latest TV show that the government wills out to give you your state-mandated propaganda of how to act and how to think. The less politics con you consume, the happier you'll be. Speaking of true happiness and enlightenment, number six, Gary Ablett Jr., the Geelong Football Club, the Gold Coast Suns, and the Geelong Football Club. Gary Ablett Jr., a.k.a. Gadge, is pure. He is the ultimate Christian. He is the ultimate punished man. If there was anyone on the continent of Australia who was more likely to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, it would be Gary Ablett Jr., this is a man who, very similar to the Marcus Stoinis archetype, will pull, push himself for the phys to physical limits, but not for anything vain like fame or glory, but more for family, honor, and God himself. He wants to follow the Bible to its very, very literal degree. Gary Ablett Jr. is pure of heart. He doesn't judge anyone, he does turn the other cheek, and he also pushes himself to his physical limitations. I show you the 2020 AFL Grand Final, Gary Ablett's very last AFL game, his last footy game at the top level, and he gets injured, he gets fucked up, and he goes off the field for an entire quarter, and then he got back on. At least I think he did, I was pretty fucking wasted when I watched that game. And this is to cap off a season where he didn't even play most rounds because he was forced to choose between his family and the game he loved. Anyway, Gary Ablett Jr., that's basically the, the last remaining male archetype, probably the rarest in the modern world, and that's just an abiding Christian, you know? Someone who goes to church every Sunday, somebody who actually impresses a uh, girl's parents in this modern day and age of degeneracy. I mean, I'm not a Christian myself, but I am an agnostic, and, uh, you know, I feel feel something pure and wholesome when I watch Gary Ablett's football, when he, he will surely be missed in the upcoming AFL seasons. Anyway, this was a bit of a, a bit of a joke vid, but also kind of literal. Just, I, I want to bring people's attention to this great book once again. Uh, male archetypes exist, you know? You are not a special or unique snowflake. You fit into one of a few selected human biological patterns, you know? And that that's fine, you know? The sooner you realize this, the sooner you pull the finger out of your ass and just become a normal human and stop trying to prove you're unique by the fucking bands you listen to. Chode mode out.